There is a legend in West Papua, Indonesia, that tells of a woman who found seven eggs. When the eggs hatched, four of them became kings that took over the four biggest islands nearby. And that is how Raja Ampat, or the Four Kings, got its name. Pati, Sonek. Sonek, ya. Sonek, ya. Setelah Sonek, nanti kita pergi ke Pulau Dayang. Dari Dayang Jaranya, sekitar 20 ya. 20 mil dari Sonek ke Dayang. 20 mil, oke. Dayang kita bermalam. Raja Ampat is an archipelago of 1,500 small islands of the northwest coast of West Papua. It's considered the crown jewel of the bird's head seascape. But not because of the riches of kings, it's because of the region's natural wealth. This is the most biodiverse marine ecosystem in the world. We're here to explore biodiversity, which is a variety of all life forms on Earth. This is really what makes this planet so special. We have life on Earth, and it comes in all these different species, different habitats, even within species, a lot of genetic variation that we're interested in. So when we talk about the biodiversity in an ecosystem, we're talking about all the different habitats in that system, all the different species in those habitats, and all the differences between individuals of those species. For example, here in Raja Ampat, there are more than 1,700 species of free fish alone. Not to mention thousands of birds, insects, reptiles, and plants that make the islands their home. But what really sets this place apart are the reefs. We have over 600 species of coral here in Raja Ampat. There's only about 800 known from the planet. So wow. we're talking three quarters, 75% of the world's coral species are in this one small area. So what is it about this place that supports such a variety of life? The absolutely amazing biodiversity you have here is really the, the result of three processes. One of them is the fact that we just have so many different habitats here, right? This lagoon is so much different from the next place. Just outside, you've got current swept reefs, big rocky drop-offs exposed to waves, really enclosed mangrove bays. Every one of those has its own suite of species that are living there. Also, biogeographically, this area is, of course, right at the intersection of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, both of which have some species which cross between them, but many which are Pacific or Indian. But here, you get both. And then the last thing is the fact that this area really is a cauldron of evolution itself, right? There's so many special habitats like this which are isolated where evolution has been proceeding at its own pace. Evolution is how species change and new ones emerge over time. Life here tends to evolve in unique and unusual ways to fill the many roles in the ecosystem. The result? There are a lot of endemic species here plants and animals you won't find anywhere else on Earth. But biodiversity is a key part of all ecosystems. In fact, it's essential for life itself. Biodiversity is what builds ecosystems and what sustains life on Earth. It's essentially the life support system of this planet. Different species are like different professions running a city. Some people take the garbage out, some people make buildings, others keep things clean, others care for the sick. It's the same in ecosystems. As changes happen and pressure mounts, this support system is all the more important. Now in order to work, that system needs to be resilient, which means it needs to adapt and respond to change. Environmental change, like climate change, the more species there are, the more of these worlds are filled, the more productive the system is, and the more stable and resilient it tends to be in the face of environmental change. Unfortunately, biodiversity itself is facing pressure too. And that pressure is coming from us. Biodiversity now is under threat from a rapidly growing human population that puts more and different threats on biodiversity than in recent history. Some of these threats include the destruction of habitats or the overharvesting of species, or climate change, which is probably the most fundamental of these threats because it changes the conditions for life on Earth as we know it. 
And it's not just global issues that threaten biodiversity hotspots like Raja Ampat. And there's new threats which evolve all the time, right? So we have done our best to get rid of the bomb fishing, the cyanide fishing, the shark finning, overfishing. And right now we're actually very concerned about possible pollution from all of the marine tourism that's coming here. So that's, that's an emerging threat. There's much we can learn about how the ocean here and our relationship to it is changing and how this place, its people and its past can help point the way to a better future for us all. The really important thing to remember is we need to see which species exist in the area, which ones are under threat and why, and how that can be addressed effectively, working with local people to come up with solutions that work for everybody. Taken together, that creates an insurance policy that helps us to protect the life support system that we depend on for survival. I certainly think that Rajampat is in a nice recovery stage right now. And in many ways, it's much better than what it was when I first came here nearly 20 years ago. But it's still not there, and, uh, and, and we still have a lot of work to do.